Colorectal cancer in the UK is a huge issue. It's the second biggest cancer killer. That means there's about 40,000 new cases diagnosed every year. And the crucial thing about bowel cancer is diagnosing it early because over 90% of people who are diagnosed with early bowel cancer will survive the disease. The way we diagnose it is with colonoscopy. And the difficulty with colonoscopy is that only 4% of people who have a colonoscopy will actually have cancer. So 96% of the time, we're exposing them to all the risks and hassles of having a colonoscopy with very little benefit. That's got massive resource implications for the NHS, and anything we can do to reduce that has to be a good thing. So a fit test is a very sensitive test for the presence of haemoglobin in poo. Much more sensitive than the previous GWIAC uh, FOB test that we used to use. And the advantage of that sensitivity is it's very good at picking up uh, cancer and high-risk polyps. So the flip side of that is that if your fit test is negative, then you can be reassured you have a greater than 99% chance of not having colorectal cancer. And for this reason, FIT is a really useful triage tool when you're assessing somebody with colorectal symptoms. GPs should offer the FIT test to patients who present with bowel symptoms that NICE describes in their DG30 guidance. These symptoms include mild abdominal pain, disturbances with constipation and bowel habit, perhaps some anemia, they're just not feeling right, they've got some soft symptoms with their bowels. And these are in contrast to the symptoms that are described in the NICE guidance NG12, which describes higher risk symptoms such as abdominal masses, very significant weight loss, microcytic anemia. So to order the FIT test, it's really simple. Let's have a look at how I do it. So within EMIS, come to Test Request menu on the left-hand side. We go to Online Test Request and choose your local hospital. Pop down to the bottom, press Pathology Search, and in the search bar, type FIT. Highlight it. And at this point, if I'd like, I can press the Info button, and this will bring up a small pop-up box, which will take me to a link to the patient information leaflet which explains to patients how to actually take the sample. Once it's printed, I close this box. This test is still highlighted, so I can go to Add, and then I close that box. Up to the top, check it's been ordered, and there it is. You'll see there's an opportunity to put some clinical details in, which you need to do, and I finish. And it now gives me the opportunity to print. There are a few important things to remember about collecting a sample and the patient information leaflet explains that. The first thing that's probably most important is getting the most appropriate sample. So blood is on the outside of faeces. So it's really important to use the green picker to stroke up and down the outside of the sample. You need to make sure that all of the small grooves on the end of the picker are filled with the faecal sample. If there's not enough sample, you would have risk of a false negative result. But equally, if you overload the sample picker, that is not going to improve the diagnostic accuracy. The test can be affected by contamination with the chemicals in toilet water, so it's really important that sample doesn't come into contact with the toilet water. The collection device contains some liquid. It's really important that that liquid stays in the device because it stabilises the sample. So the patients mustn't break the seal on the end or try and squeeze the liquid out of the device. For the laboratory to process the sample, it must have the patient's full name, their date of birth and NHS number. The patient's NHS number will be on the request form that is given to them and it's really important that they also send that request form back with the sample so we know which test to do. Once the laboratory has done the analysis, the results will be returned within five working days to the requesting GP. So when the results come through, the key thing is that they'll be presented in a numerical range. And when the result is 10 or more, it's very clear on the results box that we should refer the patient onto the hospital. 
If the result is less than 10, this means that there's a very, very low chance of any problem with colorectal cancer, and therefore they don't need to be referred onto the hospital. But for these patients, it's important that we safety net so that we are able to pick up if there's any progression of disease or if any new symptoms appear. There is no evidence that repeat testing is of benefit to patients. Those patients that come back with persistent symptoms or symptoms that have got worse should be referred to secondary care. NG12 patients will also be entered into this pathway in due course, but at the moment we're asking doctors to regard NG12 patients as they do normally, so they're referred up on their symptoms. The FIT test can't be used in place of calprotectin for investigating patients for IBD or IBS. Uh, the tests look for two very different things. So QFIT is looking for blood in faeces, so it's looking for red cells. Calprotectin is looking for evidence of inflammatory disease and it's looking for white cells. Even if a patient has already just had bowel screening that's negative and they then present to the GP with symptoms, then you should still do a FIT test. This is because the FIT test is more sensitive than our current bowel screening test. And of course this time they're presenting to us with symptoms, whereas patients that go for screening don't have any symptoms.